welcome back to Ship of Fools to the second part of our two-part special episode one premiere. Um, we are back where we left our heroes, just in case you don't remember. Uh, the three men. I, mean, I was going to say boys, and then I was like, you're all grown men. Uh, the three, Debatable. <laughs> our three heroes uh, shipwrecked on a oh, so island, on a tropical island, um, found a strange cube in the water, uh, had a mystifying encounter with some flying people who spoke to them threateningly, fired some shots, and then eventually left them alone. And our heroes are now camping out in the forest, uh, waiting to see what the night and the subsequent day will bring. So let's jump right back into it. Worm. All right, so you guys find your little campsite and you set yourselves up to take a long rest. Malachi, yes. you're on first watch, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check. Oh my fucking god! So it's that good, huh? <laughs> that they went off the table. That wasn't. That wasn't a. Hell yeah! Um, perception. It's gonna be a sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, so it's pretty much the same, um, as the, as the kind of, like, night is passing on here, um, you guys are getting bitten by all these little bugs. Not me. (laughs) Yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah, they're pretty much (laughs) avoiding Malachi. Rock hard, baby. But the others of you are, like, almost having trouble sleeping here because you're getting bitten by these little bugs. There's also these, like, um... These, like, little sounds Mm -hmm. in the forest, like the kind of settling of trees and um, the occasional snapping twig and stuff like that. Um, Malachi, at one point, you do catch a glimpse of... Actually, do you have dark vision? I think I'm the only one in the party who doesn't. (laughs) Okay, so do you have any, like, light source that you've got with you that you're using to keep watch, or are you just kind of trusting your ears? Do do do, Do we bring a torch in? I thought we brought a torch. I will say, you guys did Um, have some of the fire with you when you originally entered the forest. I just kind of assumed we'd have that going just to scare any animals away. Are we camped inside the forest? Yes. Yeah, but it's not like... It's okay. not like we're going to set a forest fire if we have a fire, right? No, you guys would be we're able a to. Clear area. Well, it depends how responsible we are. Yeah, I kind of I assumed like as with a campsite we would have like a fire to keep animals away. Yeah. Yeah, and we're not super far in, so we honestly probably yeah. could have just toted the fire I built into there. Yeah, so you 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 guys have got you've got your fire light there. Um you do Malachi at one point catch a glimpse of like some predator you like see the eye shine mm-hmm. in the underbrush uh reflected from the fire yeah. um but it seems to decide that the three of you are more trouble than you're worth um and after a couple of seconds it disappears back right. into the forest and the rest of your watch passes more or less without incident uh at the end of my watch i stand up i walk over to reagan and i kind of like nudge him with my toes it takes me a second, but <laughs> I eventually okay. come to it. And when he, when he doesn't immediately hop up, I, I kneel down next to him and, like, gently, like, tap his shoulder with one finger. <laughs> uh, it's gonna take more than that, bud. <laughs> okay. I plug his nose. I, like, deck you as I wake up. Like, you get, a, you get like, a full, like... I barely dwarven, feel it. Dwarven it bruises your punch. knuckles. I, like, wake up <laughs> gasping for air, shaking out my hand. I say, sorry, uh, your watch. Uh, oh, all right. Yep. Yep, yep. um, Ooh. I saw some eyeballs. I saw... Just, well, Yep, just, just flo- some eyeballs. Just, just floating. <laughs> Great. Great. Cool. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go to bed. Yep, you do that. I'll, uh, I'll wake Finn up. Malachi's out like a light. <laughs> Malachi sleeps standing up. <laughs> like, he just closes his eyes and turns into a statue. Um, yeah, go ahead and roll me a perception check. All right. Nat 20 plus 2. Ooh. These are good dice, y'all. Brilliant. <laughs> Okay, so on a nat 20, um, Reagan, you're sitting there in you guys' campsite, kind of keeping an eye on the forest around you. You're, like, poking at the fire a little bit, and it's 
it's less that you see or hear something and more that just like the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and you just get this sense that something's watching you. And for a second, you almost, you think you see a shadow move in the forest. Hannah, my heart just started pounding, like legit. I'm having heart palpitations. <laughs> Continue. Um, and it's just, it's like the slightest flicker and like you're not even sure that there was ever anything there. And after a few seconds of sitting there, one hand on your hammer, your axe, what do you have? I have a hammer and two daggers. One hand on your <laughs> hammer, kind of ready to go. Um, but there's no sounds. You don't see anything else. There's no kind of alarming noises other than the normal noises of the forest. You just, you have the distinct sense that something is keeping an eye on you. Do I have a sense of whether or not that's malevolent? Um, it doesn't feel benevolent. It doesn't feel like <laughs> a comforting, watchful eye. Um, it more feels like something or someone is just kind of still trying to size you up and figure out what your deal is. Okay. I don't look towards where I saw the flicker anymore. I don't, like, focus on it. I look other places, but I do take out my daggers and begin to clean them okay you do that and you're just sitting there and there isn't I bank the fire a bit <laughs> yeah the feeling the, disappears or at least abates after a little bit your heart sort of isn't racing as fast as if maybe whatever it was is not looking or went away or is not keeping as close an eye and the rest of your watch passes without incident malachi snores really loudly <laughs> 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 yeah, and you wake up Finn for the third watch. All right, so I kind of roll out my shoulders, shake it out, and then I go over to him and I jam my boot underneath him and I just fully flip his entire body over. I flip him like hamburger. <laughs> yeah, and I land on two feet. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Show me the physics oh, of wait. that. No, I was picturing, I think I was picturing that wrong. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I was picturing you like kicking she me She was like dead air. fish flopping you and you're picturing like a martial arts flip back onto your feet. <laughs> I was pancaking you. Oh, okay. Then I wake up and I'm like, I'm like too jibber. I'm like, oh yeah, all right, time to go and watch. <laughs> so I, I kind of, I kind of cast a wary eye around us and I kind of lower my voice and I'm like, Something's out here. It's not threatening us, but there's something watching. So, just don't do anything stupid. I knew we should have camped closer to the ocean. What, you think that's better? Yeah. Oh, my dad wouldn't let me get hurt. Your dad? Yeah. <laughs> do I want to know who your dad is? I don't know, do you? It's like a weird question to ask me. I can't read your mind, although I can do magic. Ugh, you can do magic. Okay, uh, I'll bite. Who's your dad? Oh, the the lurker. The the lurker in the deep. <laughs> Reagan, this is the equivalent of someone confidently going, "Yeah, my dad's the boogeyman." <laughs> <laughs> well, question. So, do I, as an experienced um... sailor, like, do I buy into? the superstitions about that like you decide how superstitious reagan is how many of the of the stories he buys into um i will say you know that in this ocean the fact that there are beings with power out there is known that's like that's true um but as far as like any particular one um as far as whether the lurker who you've you know you've heard stories and songs about um as far as that goes it kind of could be true could be false but you do know that there are creatures and beings with power out in the ocean y'all are so lucky that malachi is sleeping right now he is so fucking superstitious <laughs> <laughs> he would kick Finn out of camp. <laughs> Reagan's like, I'd say, the normal amount of stitches. Um, okay. So I just kind of like look at Finn. I'm like, the lurker in the deep is your dad. Yeah. B big tentacly guy. Yeah. That's him. <laughs> your dad. Yeah. Hey, who's who's your mom? Oh, I don't know. Wait, you know your dad, but not your mom. How does that even work? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, was, I wasn't raised by them. I was raised by, by my foster parents. Ah, uh, oh, oh, well, that makes perfect sense then. All right. So I kind of, I kind of tap out of humoring him, and I'm just like, all right. And I uh, go, all right. And I sit lean with my back against a large tree so that I'm kind of kind of covered, and I'm like, keep watch till dawn. Great. Um, Finn, go ahead and make me a perception check. 16. 16. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so you're, you're hearing the same, you know, the buzzing bugs, the sounds of the waves. Um, as it starts to get closer to dawn, you start hearing bird song and the forest waking up and you can hear the gulls out over the ocean. Um, because you're sort of primed to be looking for it, you understand what Reagan meant about feeling like you're being watched there's nothing in particular that you notice but it's just kind of a general sense you just you keep looking over your shoulder and expecting something to be there um but you're not even sure i mean there's part of you that's like well what if i'm just imagining it because he said something um there's nothing that you can point to but it's just this very kind of unsettling vibe um but other than that everything passes uneventfully and the sun rises and you guys start waking up the first light of morning kind of coming through and coming through the canopy dappling the forest floor um and yeah you find yourselves coming to wakefulness fully restored all your hit points spell slots all of that i was worried i was gonna need those two spell slots i burned last night drying malachi (laughs) (laughs) only one was drying malachi come on do you really want your friend just rusted until he can't move? Oil can. I say friend generously. Oil can. <laughs> Malachi needs a heart. When I wake up, I'm going to start braiding my hair. You all notice that my hair is luscious and reddish blonde, and there's a lot of it. Mm. And so I just kind of set to braiding it. You guys wake up and see that Finn has been whittling, but like he didn't make anything like impressive. It's just like a triangle. <laughs> But he's proud of it. How do you whitt- whittling a triangle? Well, I guess hard, not whittling, Andy. carving, carving, not whittling. <laughs> Malachi wakes up real slow, but then as soon as he's like fully awake, he just starts. He sits up. He starts tidying all his things. He starts folding up his his little coat that he laid out into a little, neat little square. Sticks in his pocket since I'm assuming it's warm out here. Yes, it is. Um. And he says, any of you have any idea what we might try and eat around here? Do we? Like, just looking <laughs> around, does anything immediately look edible? I will say, um, you guys saw it kind of, like, back out on the beach. You saw crabs um, that looked like they'd be edible. Um, you saw kind of the, like, normal small crabs. And then you also saw, like larger crabs beginning to approach the size of giant crabs, which are a thing in this world. How big? How big is that? Giant crabs are like the size of a big dog or a okay, small so person. You didn't see any that were like person sized, but you saw um, ones that were like small, the size of like a small dog. All right. If I so if I like stepped on that, could I kill it? <laughs> no, you <laughs> need to make like an actual attack with a oh, like a okay. weapon. I, my foot's pretty heavy. I guess that's true. If you really wanted to just step on it, um, I would let you do what about that. Plant? Um, you also know, I mean, the existence of the predator that Malachi saw implies that there would be other, like, prey animals here. But you'd have to do a little bit, spend a little bit of time, do a little bit of hunting in order to find that. Okay. So that's a no on plants? Oh, on plants? Um, I would say make me a survival check. All right. Oh, I'm good at survival. 18. 18. Yeah, you uh you find some coconuts. Guys, I found some coconuts. Consider these. Can I just crack it open with my hands? Make a strength check. Oh, okay. <laughs> these dice hate me though. Cracking a coconut with your hands is hard. I know. So are his hands. Okay, uh, that's going to be a 19. A 19, yes. You dig in your thumbs and split <laughs> the coconut with your bare hands there. I offer 
half to Reagan and half to Finn. Nice. Cheers. I, I slurp it up. I slam that coconut water because hydration is key, guys. I say, I also saw Reagan. I told you about those eyeballs. So I'm assuming there's something that whatever animal that is, it hunts for prey around here. So it might be some hunting as well. Mm. Some little guys. You got anything worth hunting with? Wow, what just happened to my accent? <laughs> I forgot who I was. I had a moment. Well, all right, all right. You got anything we're hunting with? Got me axe. I have a spear. You've got a spear? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see I use it, it for it's fishing. On, my javelin's me. gone, so I've got got my great axe and my dagger. I used to use it. Spear fishing, you say, Finn? I used to use it for fishing. Yeah. Hold on. I... Hold on a second. What? Speaking of... Anything happened while I, while I was sleeping? Well, um, I don't know about... I feel like me and Reagan kind of bonded a little. <laughs> Without me? Grew closer as what friends. What the <laughs> typical. fuck are you talking about, Finn? Did I misread that? Uh, I t- uh, you just told me that you think your dad is the lurker in the deep. I say, what? Yeah, he's... I, I don't know. He, he says that he wanted to be like to the you ocean. see him as a father figure. Or he's actually your father. Well, how you know, are like, you he's gonna my see father. a father figure in the freaking lurker in the deep? He's my literal father. I, I cross myself at Finn. <laughs> I cross myself. I, I I pick up some sand and throw it at him. I'm not sure what that's gonna do. But. <laughs> I'm I'm unbothered by that. You know, sand is basically the ocean. I I look nervously down at the sand. <laughs> Yeah, so that happened, I guess. Um, but no, there was, there was something. Um, probably at like, you know, deep past midnight. I just, I felt something. I and I, I feel like I saw like a flicker of something. I just, you know how it is when the your hackles get up and you just know that there's something watching. Was it you. one of them? What are, What are hackles? Quiet boy. Are you asking this in real life? <laughs> No, Finn's asking. No. Andy knows what hackles are. Malachi just says, quiet, boy. And then <laughs> to Reagan, was it one of them? Couldn't tell you if it was person or not. Felt felt more creature than person, but it's hard to say. Mm. I didn't see anything full on. Was it a hackle? Mm. Shut up, boy. Mm. <laughs> but nothing beyond that. And Finn's daddy issues. Well, I guess not much to be done. Oh, no about issues. We're we're that. on good terms. You're on good terms with the lurker and the deep. <laughs> yeah. Do you like have him over for Sunday tea or something? Well, no. I mean, I've never like met him in person, like face to face. Like we're we're cool. We're tight. I I don't know if we have time to unpack all of this. All right. Let's, think, let's focus on living first. I think we should get Finn. You like the water? Go get. You you wanna you wanna try and fish for us then? Uh, okay, so here's the thing. I don't eat fish. Excuse me. Ever since I I became able to to telepathically communicate with fish, it sort of seemed like super fucked up oh, to eat fish. Oh boy. Are are you a vegetarian? No, no. I love land animals to eat. <sighs> I'm sorry. But well, well, not wait, fish. Telepathically communicating with fish. How do you think I've been doing all the stuff that I did? I thought you were just crazy. No. You must still be. Jury's out. Okay. Um. Well, I eat fish. Give me the spear. Uh, Finn, Finn, like, looks at the spear and then looks at Malachi and then, like, sighs heavily and, like, hands it over. <laughs> I say, thank you. Uh. Just don't, don't do it within 120 feet of me, okay? <laughs> what? Not this I have no way of telling minute. that. <laughs> I say, uh, you guys a couple of good ones. And I ask Reagan if he has a ruler. A, a ruler? I mean, uh, technically, I guess I'm a citizen of Arabia. No, no, no. I, mean, I, I just, I just walk over to the, uh, <laughs> to the water, <laughs> and I try and fish. <laughs> okay. And I build up the fire. Okay. Um, go ahead and make. Um, uh, I mean, I feel like this should be a survival check. I've never made so many survival checks in a D and D campaign in my life. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, I'm not very sneaky, so we'll see. Survival's wisdom. No, I know, I know. I'm just talking about the fact that there's this huge rock man lurking over the water trying oh. to fish. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. That is going to be a 12. A 12? Okay. 
Um, I'll say that's enough for you to get like a couple. There's enough for you each to have like a little bit. Um, okay. And it takes you like a good chunk of time, okay. but eventually um, you you return with enough for yeah. you guys to eat. There just probably won't be any left over. While he's trying to fish, you just like see him like standing over the water, like arms out, spear in one hand, just like really slowly jabbing at the water because he's not very fast. And during that, Finn accidentally walks too close and just like <laughs> hears like the pitiful psychic scream of a fish as a spear like splits through it. What about all the other ones around it going like, what the fuck is this trying? This guy trying to do? <laughs> I just, I shut, I don't say anything. <laughs> I run away. Oh, buddy. Cool. So you've got your fish. Um, you have your nice little breakfast here. You sort of fry the fish over the fire. I, I don't eat them. Yeah, that's right. true. Well, Finn I point, abstains. I point to one of them and I tell Reagan like he had, he had kids. <laughs> I know. <laughs> when, when he says that, Malachi is like, fish lay eggs. That's not the same. Yeah, and then those eggs hatch, <laughs> and then they have kids. You've really got a daddy thing going on, don't you? <laughs> okay, I eat my fish. <laughs> I also eat my fish. I eat coconut. I, I offer to split the last one with Reagan, although I don't look really happy about it. <laughs> we just, we made ten out. We lady the trampet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys have your fish. Finn has right. coconuts. Um, and then you are here. At your campsite, in the forest, on this island. All right. Romantic. <laughs> I'm like, either of you ever, you know, had to go it on your own for a while? Nope. Mm. Reagan kind of, like, laughs in a very bitter way. He's like, okay. Yeah. All right. This is the furthest I've ever been from home. Okay. Um, boy, just walk behind us. I'm... We might as well try and find a way out of here. Do you want to walk the coast, or are you going to go deep jungle? Well, I don't know. We're on an island, right? I assume so. I mean, we, uh, God knows where we are. Yeah, we haven't, like, walked around the whole perimeter of this island, right? We don't know how far no, it goes. No, you have not. I say walking the tree line's probably our better option. I dig that. We ought Just... to find us a source of fresh water, too. Yep. So You're looking at him! Excuse me? I can do create or destroy water. Not like a lot, so don't. So really, we should find a different source of water. But just saying, if things get desperate. Are you describing like pissing or? No, I can do magic. Remember? <laughs> okay. Well, I say, I say, like magic. Well, if there is a source of fresh water on this island, it's got to go out to the sea somewhere. And I could destroy it. I don't want none of your mm. magic water. Reagan All right. seems pissed again. <laughs> also, I don't want to walk on the beach just in case anything unsavory is looking for us. So. All right. All right. Cool. So you guys set out walking um, along the tree line, kind of yeah. the edge of the island there. And are you guys trying to hide? I mean, I'm not, I'm not like actively stealthing, but I'm not just, yeah. Okay. Not just walking through the open. <laughs> hey, guys, how y'all doing? I'm just going to go crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you guys set out. Um, it's very hot here on this island, kind of like tropical conditions here. But it's another beautiful day, a little bit more cloud cover um, than you had yesterday. The bugs are still swarming around. They're a little bit better during the day, but you're still kind of having to bat them away as you're walking. Um, you've been going for about an hour when, um, who's in front? Who's kind of taking point on this? I think Malachi's probably trying to. I don't know if Reagan's jockeying with him for it, but. No, Reagan's good on watching the six. All right. Yeah, well, Finn's more of the nine. I feel like Finn's the caboose. <laughs> Finn is also, like, trying to sneak, but, like, only because they are. He doesn't actually <laughs> feel like he needs to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Malachi feels familiar enough with foreign islands to just kind of take point on this. So go ahead and make me a perception Mwah. check, Malachi. Yeah. Malachi? Nineteen plus one, so twenty, but not that. Twenty, okay. So you notice before you get to it, you notice there in the underbrush is a giant lizard. Um, you at first think it's a crocodile. That's how big it is, but then you realize it's more. It looks more just like a normal kind of like um, a more like dexterous lizard. Um, but it is, you know, enormous. Um, and it's there in the underbrush, uh, clearly lying in wait for something. So it's not like a baby dragon, and it's not a lizard folk. 
No, it okay. is a straight up, just <laughs> okay. a very large lizard. I just stopped dead. Oh my god, Malachi's dead. And I, I'm very confused. I've never, I'm like, what is that? I bounce off of Malachi's back in a slightly comical fashion. <laughs> I bounce off of Reagan's back. <laughs> Three beautiful boys. And Andy. I say, what is that? What's what? Uh, you guys can see as he points ooh. it out to you, just this large lizard lying in the underbrush. So it looks like it's just like waiting for prey, you said? Yeah. Does this creature have a swimming speed? You know, sure. <laughs> um. So I'm like, guys, I could, I could ask who he is. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I pull out my great axe just to be safe. We could just be polite. I, I, I hide the great axe behind my back. <laughs> or I try um. to. So I, I telepathically reach out and I'm like, uh, hello, hello, H- how are you today? <laughs> okay, so with the wording of this ability, the creatures can talk back to you, yes? Yes. <laughs> okay, it goes, mammal. Uh, yes, uh, correct, very, very good, very astute. Um, I just wanted to check my my friends and I were walking this way. Just wanted to to oh. make sure you're you're not gonna like try to eat us. <laughs> eat you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no thanks. Is he saying this in lizard language out loud, or is this in his head? Oh, it's in my head. Okay, so so Reagan and I are just watching you very intently communicate telepathically. <laughs> yes, and the lizard's head kind of snaps toward you, and it's hissing out loud, but you guys don't hear it in words. What did you say? <laughs> Does, does anybody have, like, a spray bottle we could discipline it with? I see. Oh, shoot. Because if not, I think we're going to have to fight. We're going to have to fight it? I say, why did you do that? And I pull out my great axe. What did you say to it? <laughs> he seems pretty attached to the idea of eating us. Okay. Great. Good. All right. Well, Good. I I pull out my great axe and I just start walking forward. And if it comes at me, it comes at me. I unsheath my daggers. Okay, so you start walking forward, and it basically, Malachi basically ignores you completely to kind of lunge for the back and go for Finn in particular. Uh, Everybody go ahead and roll initiative. I say, wait, what? Oh, no. (laughs) Malachi's inorganic material. (laughs) All right, I have a 15. Yikes, nine. 11. Okay, you still, I can't roll for shit. So, um, Regan, what did you have again? Nine. Okay, and Malachi? Fifteen. Okay, so Malachi, you're first. Okay. <laughs> I, like, sort of do a double take as it goes by me. <laughs> Can, do I get, like, an opportunity attack on that? I'm going to say, yeah, you're not going to get an opportunity attack because it's it's smart enough to not go right by you. Um, but, oh, yeah, okay. you can spin around and you're still in melee with it. You okay, can attack cool. It. I'm going to attack it. Go for it. And so I add to my attack roll, right? Yes. What What do I add? <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, sorry. You add your strength modifier and your proficiency. Okay, cool. So it's going to be a uh, 19 then. A 19 to hit? Yeah, that hits. A word. Um, I'm going to roll for damage. Doo, doo, doo. So that's going to be with my great axe. <laughs> I get to roll a d12. Damn. Yeah, baby. Plus four slashing damage. So... Ah, well, I'm going to need it. So, seven damage. Seven damage. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you take your axe and you slice into this thing as it kind of rushes past you. I say that was rude. <laughs> <laughs> Finn, you actually act next. All right, so how how big is this thing? It's larger than you. Okay. Um, is it larger than me? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's okay. a large-sized beast, so it's like a... A horse. Yeah, like the yeah, the size of like a small horse. All right, I'm gonna hit him with that trusty Eldritch Blast. Go for it. Ah, uh, that is a seventeen. No, a twenty-three to Ooh. hit. Twenty-three to hit? Yeah, that hits. <laughs> All right. I sure uh, hope it does. Be... Three damage. Three damage. Okay, very nice. Um, and as I do that, I like telepathically communicate him. Like this is not how we should behave. You just hear more kind of like, <laughs> hungry. <laughs> uh, it can communicate with you, but it does have an intelligence of two. So. <laughs> well, how do you like that? <laughs> Great. Okay, so it is the lizard's turn. It is going to take a bite at Finn. 
Ah. <laughs> Finn, uh, 17 to hit. Oof, yeah, that'll that'll get me. All right, you take... Oh, my goodness. Uh, you take eight piercing Rock damage from this thing biting into you. Oh, my God. Finn, what's your, what's your HP again? I have nine max HP. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hellish rebuke on this boy. <laughs> okay, go for it. What do you roll or do I roll? The creature must make a dexterity saving throw, uh, and my my spell save is DC is 14. Okay, then it fails. That's an 11. Aha! So it takes 2d10 fire damage. Ooh, wow, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> 19 damage. 19 damage. Okay. A zero is so, a 10. Yeah, right? I mean, so what happens is the this lizard um, scuttles forward and leaps at Finn, and it sort of sinks its enormous jaws ah. into, like, his neck and <laughs> shoulder, and there's this spray of blood across the leaves of the forest. And Finn, ah. past this giant lizard that's now trying to eat him, uh, manages to choke out these few words, and the lizard just lights on fire and releases Finn, stumbles back, and is very quickly reduced to just a charred body lying. Oh, it's dead. That is what you get. Brush. It had less lizards. than 19 hit points. When so, you try to yeah. eat me. Yeah, and Reagan, you're just standing there, <laughs> hammer in hand, ready to leap into action. <laughs> Didn't even need to do anything. <laughs> if only you could see us right now. <laughs> Anyone else feel like lying down? So Finn is spurting blood. I, uh... Yes. I go, oh, Okay. I lie down. Um, <laughs> I immediately start ripping uh, the bottom of my shirt. Actually, I just take my shirt off. I'm just, guys, I'm taking my shirt off. I say, stop, stop. Uh, mm, well, I'm stop. sorry. You got a thing against. I, I put my the hand. Nips are back. I put my hand on Finn's neck and heal him for five HP. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, that's fair. Thanks. Shit, you're, you're magic too. I look at I look at Reagan's now you crop not top me when I said I could do magic? and say, you know what? That's not a bad idea, though. <laughs> and I, I consider making a crop top for myself, but I don't want to rip my shirt. So I just kind of tuck it in the way girls do in middle school when they're like pretending to make crop tops out of their shirt where they take the <laughs> bottom and tuck it in the top. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just walking around in a crop top right now? It's hot. Do you have a belly he button? looks very eighth grade chic. Yeah, does he have a belly button? Um, it's... I feel like you'd have a belly button. I do, but it's got like a little little crystal in it. So if you've got a belly button, you gotta have nips. That's that's just so you guys know. That's not one that naturally grew there. I, I put that there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell because it's just like a slightly different shade of green than some of the other crystals. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of regard Malachi with a mixture of like distrust and like grudging respect because I'm kind of coming to the realization that I'm stuck with a bunch of magic boys, and that really rustles my jimmies. Okay. Um, so I just kind of growl something indistinct and keep my shirt off. Okay. I, I pick up the, the rags that he dropped on the ground and stuff them in my pocket. <laughs> okay. Uh, so do you guys continue on your way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you guys keep walking. You find... Oh, wait. Hold up. No, I want to go back. <laughs> yes. I want to try a small slice of barbecued lizard. Ooh, yeah. Can we actually Ooh. pack up some of that meat? Oh yeah. I will say you totally can actually. Yeah, you've got all this cooked, well, more like charred uh lizard meat. And it looks like it'd be pretty good or at least edible. So yeah, you guys okay. take a little bit of time and you sort of harvest the lizard corpse and oh, yeah, I you've just... you've now got all a right. decent amount I of love meat. Barbecue. Can I take out the heart and bury it? Sure. I just want to do that. Davy Jones! <laughs> I say, who? I just take out the heart and I bury it. And I like, I look like I'm about to say a prayer, but I, but then I, I like, I open my mouth and then I, I close my mouth again because I don't know what to say. And I just kind of like pat the dirt. I try to cover for it by saying that the lizard was named Davy Jones. <laughs> I yank out one of its fangs and pocket it. Mm. Cool. You yank it out of my arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought it was your neck. Oh, my neck. <laughs> it's got big jaws. There's some teeth kind of okay. all up in there. <laughs> okay. Cool. So you guys walk for a couple more hours, still sort of like along the tree edge there. Um, you're past the wreck of the debris now, so you can just see the open ocean off to one side of you. Ah, oh, shit. Maybe we should have checked that debris out a little bit more. Oh, well. Malachi, go ahead and make me another perception check. Okay. 
that is not that landed on like a the edge of something so oh ouch should have just kept it um <laughs> that's going to be a 6 6 okay so you don't notice anything until you're like right up on it you guys are just walking along and then all of a sudden you feel the ground squelch beneath your mm-hmm. feet and you look around and you realize that you've come off of the nice sandy beach you were walking on and the relatively solid forest floor into this swampy, marshy area. Um, You can hear Mm -hmm. running water somewhere. It sounds like there's maybe a stream further inland that's feeding this Uh area and making it so all the way down to the water's edge is just this like really soft ground, um, more bugs buzzing and this kind of swampy area that you've just walked right into here. But there's, do we see any source of running water? You don't see it. You think maybe if you walked further inland, you could find where there's like an actual running stream. But okay. here, pretty much all you've got is marsh. I say, mm, well, this got to come from somewhere. Let's go check it out. Right? Is that how water works? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so you guys start to walk inland toward presumably where the source of this running water would be. Um... As you turn away from the ocean and start heading basically deeper into the swamp, can I have, um, Malachi, I guess you'd still be leading. Can I have you make me a survival check? Yup. Rock, bro. Okay. That is going to be a 17. 17? Yep. Great. Um, so you notice, basically right before you step into it, you notice an area where the ground gets very, (gasps) very soft and muddy, um, And you realize Uh that this is really sort of a bog um, and that you're Mm. liable to get stuck in it if you step in the wrong place. I throw my arms out. I say, wait. Um." We all comically bump into each other's bags (laughs) again. I say, hey, kid, um, you can destroy water, right? Yep. All right, because if we walk through this, we're going to sink. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. I don't follow. I can you like dehydrate the ground here or something like oh, that maybe? Um I think let me just consult the description of Creator Destroy Water <laughs> that I have memorized. Let me just <laughs> meditate on that for a moment. Let me just pray on that. Um I can destroy up to ten gallons of water. Mm. So I'm not sure that's gonna it's help. It's probably too much. more than ten gallons, right, DM? Um, if he were to use it, I would say that it would make one area easier to walk on. But as you're looking around you, you're realizing that, like, this whole area is just covered in this very swampy, sticky, muddy stuff. Okay. I say, mm, yeah, maybe not. You see maybe, like, 50 feet in front of you a place where it gets solid again. But uh-huh. as far as where you are right now, you guys have sort of walked into a spot where you're, like, surrounded by this bog. Okay, so my impression is that we would just, like, sink right into it. You could try to walk on it, but that is your impression. Okay, so maybe we could just walk out onto the beach for a little bit just to get around this patch, and then go back to where we were heading through before, like in the tree line. Seems good to me. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, right. But I almost wonder if there's higher ground. If this is coming down from somewhere. Well, yeah, but how are we going to get there? Oh, let's go up and around, but then I'm saying that maybe we should head inland once we get past it. Oh, yeah, 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 no. I, Malachi's, like, kicking himself. Yeah, that's, yeah, okay. I, I meant that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> are we both still shirtless right now? Uh, I'm not shirtless. I'm wearing, topped. I'm wearing, like, the eighth grade crop top. That's crop great. top. Finn, are you shirtless? No, I, I have my shirt on. My shirt probably has some tears in it from the tea. Oh, it's probably but... soaked in blood. <laughs> I roll up my pants a little bit so they don't get wet from the bog. <laughs> okay. Um. So you guys' plan is basically to go down by the ocean where it's a little bit more solid? Yeah. 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 Okay. So everybody give me a... I will let you choose either a dexterity saving throw or a strength saving throw. Basically to like navigate your way okay. out of the really marshy spot you've gotten yourselves into onto more solid ground. One of those is significantly better than the other. Oof. Uh, yeah. That's going to be a 20, not nat. That's a 10. 13. Okay. Uh, Malachi, you're fine. You just sort of... Um, 
walk on through. There's a couple points where you feel your foot start to get uh-huh. stuck and you yoink it up. Yeah, out exactly. Of there. You just sort of yank it out. Resist um, the suck. The other two of you, it's a little bit, you're doing it a little bit less elegantly. It's pretty slow going, but since you guys went and walked down by the beach, it's a bit easier uh, than it would be if you'd have tried to just like barrel straight through. So you're managing, nobody gets catastrophically stuck, um, but it's kind of slow and hot Mm -hmm. going. As I'm going, I'm just like whispering. So like, I don't want them to hear, but I'm just like, oh, yuck. Oh, gross, gross. Oh, (laughs) gross. Yuck. (laughs) Yeah, so you guys continue picking your way along the water's edge here. Um, Finn, at one point when you sort of, you get your foot stuck in a soft spot and you're like working on pulling it out without losing your shoe, um, and you happen to notice down there by your foot is a... What when you pick it up, it looks like it is a torn piece of parchment. Um, the mm. edges ripped as if it was once part of like a larger piece of parchment. Um, and written on it are the letters G A, and then under that, uh, hold on a second, let me look up exactly where I wrote down what it says. Uh, on the corner of the parchment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So at the top it says G A, and then under that it says Help. It's from and Georgia. then under that. The sun, exclamation point. So altogether it reads, Ga, help the sun. Guys. God help the sun? Ga, or G-A, help the sun. It's three different lines. Son or sun? So only Finn sees this one? Sun, S-U-N, sun. S-U-N. Um, and Finn is the one who finds it lying in the ball. Guys, someone from Georgia needs us to help the sun. <laughs> <laughs> someone from what? I don't know. <laughs> Malachi says, what does that say? Can you read? Ga help the sun? Ga help? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a dialect I'm not familiar with. I think it's torn, fish boy. It looks oh. ripped. I don't, I don't know torn. What, what culture does is that Does it look from? Like, a, like an old piece of paper? No, it does not. It's a little damp mm. from lying on the ground in this swamp, but otherwise. Okay, I say, where'd you find this kid? In the swamp. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I meant, like, where in this giant swamp did you oh, see this paper? well, just, like, right here in the marsh where I was sinking. Mm. <laughs> You're still sinking, kid. <laughs> ah! Why do you keep finding stuff? I, I kind of grasp Finn by the scruff of his neck and, like, yank him up a bit. Whee! Yeah, that's all. <laughs> How old he wasn't is Finn? that stuck, so um, that's all he needed. He's, I forget, he's either 19 or 20, but like he's and a he's half elf, so he has like wee. a different maturation <laughs> scale in humans. That's true. You're okay. like a 16 year old. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm also, I'm pretty sure, taller than Regan, who is like tossing me around. I mean, how tall are you? Regan is weirdly am, tall. Uh, how, how tall is everybody? <laughs> I'm 6'3. Yeah, I'm 6 feet. I'm 6'6. Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> You're all so We're tall. so large. <laughs> Big, beautiful boys. Finn, Finn, I'm probably like three times your weight. Yeah. You're six foot six? Jesus. So now that we've established how tall everyone is, uh, you found this piece of parchment. I say, hey, magic boy, can you scry from that? Nope. Mm. Don't okay. know any scrying. I say, okay, can I look? Yeah. I hand it to him, but first I sniff it to see if that tells me anything. It smells like... Uh, make me a perception it check. smells like bog. <laughs> bog bodies. <laughs> um, that is... You pull out Finn, someone else comes out clutching his ankles. Five. <laughs> a five? Yeah, it smells like bog. Guys, it smells like bog. <laughs> I, see, I see Finn smell it, and I go to smell it too. Make a perception check. It must be from a bog. Uh, that's gonna be a 13. Smells like bog again, but under that, there's almost like a nice, like, almost florally scent to it. I see. This was a lady's. (laughs) (laughs) The lady of the bog! I see. Actually, it might just be a druid's. I don't really know, but it smells like flowers to me. The swamp queen. I would like to make a... I don't know what this would be, like if this would be a history check or just a general investigation check, but I want to see if I can like glean anything either from the handwriting or the quality of the parchment or the color of the ink. Okay. Full on detective. 
I will say just do like a yeah, just do like a general intelligence check. Oh. <laughs> Rut row. <laughs> That's an eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Yeah, you notice first of all you notice that the G A are in capital mm-hmm. letters and that they're done with very nice handwriting, basically like in block letters. Um, and the other words are all underlined. And as you're sort of looking at it, you get the sense that this was like a flyer or a poster of some kind. Mm. Hmm. All right. So I mean, it looks like it was a a flyer or a poster of some sort. Mm. But I say, well, this couldn't have necessarily survived, you know, like washing up. This wouldn't be intact if it had washed up. So this must be recent. There's got to be somebody else here who's dropping flyers. Right. Um. Oh God. I mean, I, we can't search the bog. Right. No, we can't on, search no. the bog. Let's let's just keep going. I yeah. say. But we should hold on to this. Yeah. Hang on to it, fish boy. Okay. Do you you don't think if this was. You don't think the shadow? What 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 do we call those guys? The hackles. Mm. <laughs> the hackles. <laughs> sure, the hackles. The the cloaked men. The hackles. What if the hackles got them? The hackles got whoever was writing this, or I, I don't know why, but I mean, there's the or lizard the clearly hadn't eaten anything yet. I haven't seen anything else around. That's true. It could have drifted from. They could have just. They could have drifted. It could have. They could have drowned in the bog. I don't forget it. Okay. How far are we from the ocean? Like, is it plausible that this could have washed up from the sea? Uh, from where you found it, it's plausible. But Reagan's right; it doesn't look nearly waterlogged enough mm. for that. Um, and it's like a little bit wet, but it doesn't. It's still very readable and mm. doesn't look like something that's right. been kicking around Next in the, the ocean. Wouldn't have survived. Malachi says, "Yeah, I don't know any gaw. I think we should keep going, and just you know, what keep an eye out." Aye. Okay. So you guys continue your trek. You make it eventually out of the marshy area and back onto the sort of nice okay. beach. Uh, Before we go on, uh-huh. I just want to wipe off my feet. I don't want any of that bog stuff on me, okay? Bog body, bog body. <laughs> okay, my feet are wiped. <laughs> okay, so you guys take a minute. Malachi wipes his feet off, gets as dry as it's possible to get under yes. these conditions. <laughs> Um, and yeah, you guys continue on your way. You keep walking along the edge of the beach here. Um, and you notice as the afternoon wears on that, uh, clouds begin to gather Mm. and this, uh, that it starts raining, this drizzle of rain. Normal speed storm approach though, right? Normal speed. Um, and you even notice that there's no lightning or thunder. It's just this kind of slow, steady rain as the afternoon goes on. Reagan loves that. <laughs> Malachi hates it. Finn's like neutral. <laughs> do you guys stay out on the beach or do you head back into the forest as soon as you're out of the Are bog? we able to sort of see where the bog ends where we could head back into the trees? Yeah, I'll say as long as you're watching for it, you can sort of get back into the forest. When... Yeah, as, as soon as we possibly can, Malachi bolts out of that rain. Yeah. Um, I stay a little bit more on the beach because I like the rain and I like looking at the ocean. Nice. I stay also on the beach because I like looking at the ocean. The rain is... I can take or leave the rain. So you guys keep walking. Um, you do find one other, like, object of note uh, in the afternoon. You, which is Reagan, you notice um, down by the water's edge, sitting on the sand, there is a hat. Uh, and it looks... It doesn't look like a sailor's hat or, like just like an ordinary hat this is like it looks like something a noble or like a fancy lady would wear um and it's just sitting apparently abandoned right at the edge of the water Hmm. i was right (laughs) uh i go pick it up kind of casually inspect it note that i call a halt to malachi in the trees i'm like this looks kind of could be the same person you dropped that note this is recent this ain't been tumbling around i walk over (laughs) take a look at the hat I sniff it. Does it smell like flowers? Um, it does. Does it yeah. smell like bog? Okay. Does it smell like the same flowers? I will say, uh, it would be. But yeah, without the bog? it would be basically the same scent that you picked up from the piece of paper. Okay. What does this hat I look like? I clap it onto Finn's head. No, I wanted to Thank wear you. it. Thank <laughs> you. I take it from Finn's head, put it on myself so I don't get wet. Oh. 
Um, and I, I, I sort of hand Finn a giant leaf to put on his head. He does. You guys continue with your new hats. And after you've gone for maybe another half hour or so, uh, everyone make me a perception check. Are we on the beach still or are we uh, on the wall? Uh, I the think trees. you tell me. Okay. Where did you, where did uh, Reagan find the hat? On the sands. Okay. Uh, 14. 7. Oh, nat 20. Nat 20. Brilliant. So 21, I guess. Reagan, you're still kind of distracted by the beach and the ocean and the rain and the general ambiance. Um, Finn, you spot through the trees ahead of you guys... There is a wall in the forest. Looks like it's very tall. Um, You can't quite tell what it's made of. You're still too far away. But it's definitely not naturally occurring. And it's definitely right in the middle of the path that you guys are walking. You're going to walk right up to it. And Malachi, with that nat 20, um, you're in the forest under the tree cover. But as you guys walk through a clearing, you happen to glance up just in time to spot two of those blue-robed figures that you had seen previously Uh flitting through the sky above you, kind of darting uh, in and out of the clouds, flying above you guys. I say, hackles. (gasps) And I I make quickly towards the tree line. I I sort of shepherd them along with me, if I can. So are you going to try and hide? Uh, Yes. (laughs) Yeah? (laughs) I'm not. I'm not going to try and hide. Okay. Uh, Malachi and Finn make me stealth checks. Okay. I mean, I guess not so much, like, deliberately, like, ducking and hiding, but just sort of, like, trying to keep out of sight so I can see them without them seeing me. But, yeah, Ooh, same difference. That's a seven. Okay. <laughs> that is a, well, it was a 19, but I have minus one to stealth, so 18. Okay. You guys duck uh, deeper into the forest, get under some big trees. Reagan, are you standing out on the beach? Uh, no. I am. I have been shepherded okay. into the tree line, okay. but I'm Great. not making a point of hiding. Okay, so you guys are all under the trees, some of you more deliberately hidden than others. Um, And they're kind of hard to make out through the trees and the clouds and the rain and everything that's going on. Um, You're just catching glimpses of dark blue, but they don't come down toward you guys. And it doesn't even really look like they're deliberately looking for something, more like they're just traveling or maybe patrolling. But they're definitely up there. Okay. Yeah, you stay put for a few minutes, and even though Reagan's not really hiding and Finn's not really hiding effectively, they don't come down or make any move toward you or anything like that. Okay. My hiding is just holding the big leaf in front of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Tree star. Okay, I'm like, I know you made that agreement with them, but I, I don't really want to be on their radar, so. It's fair. I say we continue through here carefully so uh does the wall like block our passage oh yeah which direction is it yeah so you guys pretty quickly come up on this as you get closer you see that it's basically like a fence like a wooden fence um but solid you can't see Mm -hmm. through it and it's taller than all of your heads maybe like nine or ten feet high and you can see that it stretches all the way down to the water's edge and then out, okay. basically as far as you can see, out to your left there. Mm. Shall we follow the think... fence then, I guess? Could we jump it? Finn. Yeah? Look at yourself, look at the wall. Well, I don't think I could, but I don't know what you guys are working with. I, I could try and climb it. Can I, can I try and climb it? Yeah, go for it. Uh, go ahead and make me an athletics check. Uh, sure. Uh, um, six. Does he a drop six? like a rock? Um, you're a pretty big guy and a pretty heavy guy, and you are just not yeah. finding a handhold that will hold you. Plus, it's, like, slippery because it's gotcha. been raining, and so you are just, like, scrabbling. You feel like it would be climbable, but you're not having any luck climbing. You said it's only, like, nine or ten feet, right? Yes. I want to boost Reagan. Okay, oh. cool. Reagan, go ahead and give me an athletics check with advantage. Okie dokie. Um, 18 either way. I got a 13 both times. Okay, yeah. With Malachi boosting you, you're able to very easily grab the top of the fence and hoist yourself up. And do you go over to the other side? Uh, do no. you hop over or do you just okay. keep? I'm cautious. Make a perception check as you're peering over the top of the fence here. 
Incidentally, as I do that pull-up, you all see my sick back muscles. And you also <laughs> take note of the tattoo I have. Tramp stamp. What is it? Oh, yeah, what you is it? You see it's on my um, left shoulder Oh, blade. you're still shirtless. I forgot about that. Yeah, and it's, like, decently big, and it is a kind of elven-style image of a stag with an arrow through its chest. Hmm. I get a little bit jealous of the fact that uh, Reagan's showing off his muscles. So I, just in a show of strength, instead of just, like, boosting you, like, you know, like, locking the hands under the feet, I just push you straight up. <laughs> Malachi. Malachi, look, someone shot Reagan's tattoo. <laughs> I almost drop Reagan. I'm so, like, dumbfounded at Finn's idiocy. I hiss something biting at Finn because I actually don't appreciate anybody clowning me about this tattoo. Anyways, what was I doing? Um, you were rolling a perception, perception check. Perception check. You know, flexing. I was flexing. Uh, nat 20. A nat 20. Okay. Yeah. The flexing almost like somehow enhances your perception um, because you notice a few <laughs> things right away. First, there seem to be less bugs on the other side of the fence. The kind of ever-present, like, biting and buzzing that has been basically since you've been on this island uh, disappears completely, even just as you put your head over the fence. The second thing you notice is that it smells very nice. There's this kind of, like, floral, fruity smell. Um, and you can hear the sounds ahead of you of, like, distant music you can hear conversations um every once in a while there's like a, a shout or a laugh that will rise above basically the sounds of civilization you even realize you can smell a barbecue all right um somewhere and you also notice um that it doesn't seem to be raining on the other side of the fence as you kind of put your head up there the drizzle that started this afternoon isn't there um mm. And on a nat 20, the other thing you notice is mm -hmm. that there's something almost like imperceptible. It feels like you just went through a spider web as you put your head Magic over the fence. fence. Yeah, <laughs> like fence. something something very subtle breaks. Um, and then you also notice uh, that the it looks like the trees only go on for like maybe a hundred more feet as you're looking out there. And then it opens up into some larger space. Uh, and you can also hear the sounds of people walking through the forest on the other side of the fence. Okay. Not a ton of people. And you're not hearing like city sounds, but you definitely get the sense that like there's population beyond the fence and there is at least one person in the forest. I say, what do you see? I say, get me out of here. And I pull back and drop down. I say, what was it? Well, it's civilization, but it's cool. not something I want to go anywhere near. Why not? It's it's some sort of it's some sort of enchantment. I say, whispering it like it's a bad word. <laughs> There's some sort of enchantment. I felt something pass over me as I looked through it, but it's got that smell on the other side, like the the the, the fancy lady smell. Yeah, it smells like lady. So they could help us. What di What did you see, though? You you said you felt I something. I saw, but... well, the, the forest ends after a bit. It just kind of, it opens up. And I heard people, like, talking and laughing. So there's definitely people in there. But I couldn't tell you what kind of people. I didn't see well, any I, of them. I think we should, I think we should go in. You want to go in? Yeah. I th why don't we walk? You said the forest clears out, right? Eventually. What do you say we walk that away? No, like, past the fence. Oh, past the fence? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I wanna, I think, I don't know, they might be, whatever these hackles are looking for, I know it's the cube, but, like, those people could be in danger, right? Or that could be, like, a hackle camp or something. Maybe they'll be grateful that we returned their hat. Did they have Russian accents? I didn't hear anything, it was only, like, <laughs> laughter. Nobody said, da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you guys are having this conversation, um, you hear footsteps getting closer on the other side of the fence, and then you hear, Excuse me? Is, uh, is somebody over there? I immediately drop into, like, a defensive crouch and draw both my daggers, and, like... I, I, like, freeze up, I go, A lady! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I look over and I'm like, Yeah! 
Griffin! <laughs> hey, how'd you end up over there? Do you need me to let you in? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> as you guys are crouched there on the other side of the fence, um, you see about 15 feet down from where you are, a door swings open in the fence. Um, and you see a young woman poke her head out. Um, looks like she's probably an elf. Um, she's got this, like, platinum blonde hair pulled back in a tight ponytail. Um, Mm. she's wearing, like, a, like, a white tunic, uh, with a little, like, breast pocket. Uh, and as you get closer, well, are you guys getting closer? Mm. I am. Okay. Has anyone seen, I haven't seen Midsummer. Does she look like a Midsummer lady? (laughs) Midsummer, however you say it. (laughs) Like, like the movie Midsummer? Yeah. Uh, I would say, I would say not really. She's okay. wearing more like, she's basically wearing the fantasy equivalent of like a white polo shirt. <gasps> a prep. Okay. Oh, so it's a country club for elves. <laughs> and as okay, you guys approach, approach, you see that there's a little, like a little blue triangle embroidered over her pocket. And as you approach, she sees, she's, you see, she says, okay. yeah, so let me just see your guest passes and then you can get right back on in here. Oh. I hold uh, up the triangle that I carved last night. Ah! <laughs> wow, that's very good. No, your guest Thanks. passes. I um, I hold out that shred of parchment. I say it kind of got ripped. Is this one of our? Is this the yoga flyer? I don't know. Are you? I GA? say we we had to travel a long way. It got sort of destroyed on the way here. Well, it seems a little odd that you would land on the abandoned side of the island instead of on the side where we have a very nice dock where we could like bring the ship in. But uh, I say, yeah, our, our ship wrecked. Oh, it was a whole thing. So your ship wrecked. Oh my goodness, what an ordeal you must have been through. Let's come on. Let's get you checked in at registration right away, and you can pick up your guest passes there. Thanks. You were traveling here, right? To the Bluefin Tropical Resort? Yeah, for the yo- for the for hey! the yoga. We're here for yoga? You're here for <laughs> yoga? Yeah. Just call me Bluefin. Well, you know, yoga's at sunrise, so uh, you missed it for today. Um but we will just head oh, we, we will head right uh, on in to the darn. check-in. We will get you guys all set up, you can pay the fees, everything, and then you will be all set uh-huh. and you can get back to enjoying your vacation. Okay. Thank you. Reagan is just looking like so feral right now. <laughs> what what color was that triangle again? It's blue. It's like a little embroidered blue triangle. Do I recognize it? You do not. Okay. Yeah. I turn to Reagan and Finn and I'm just like, we did it, guys. <laughs> You're Finn. It's all over. I, I asked, Finn, is this where you are actually going? <laughs> no, but like, it seems like it's apparently named after me. So nice. Wait, well, I, I missed the name of the resort. What was it called again? It's the Blue Fin Tropical Resort. Mm. Blue Fin. Reagan's just standing there looking, you know, like kind of dumbstruck, but also like paranoid, just kind of generally overall tweaky. And he's just like the abandoned side of the island. Yeah, you know, like the side of the island where it's more dangerous and there's like all these yucky bugs and swamps and... You know, you know, we just we ask guests to stay inside the fence where it's nice and there's no bugs and no rain and nothing scary where you can just go about enjoying your beautiful tropical getaway without having to deal with any of that, you know, yuckiness that comes from being on a tropical island. Lizards. Yep. Lizards. Lizards. Yes, big lizards. Definitely want to avoid I, um, those. <laughs> I adjust my crop top and hope it makes me look that, like I fit in there. Uh, it does not, <laughs> as you very quickly discover as oh, she leads okay. you through the rest of the trees and out into the big open space. And you immediately see just this high class tropical paradise. There's a semicircle of these beautiful villas as well as some like bigger buildings. Um, there's just water that's even bluer than it should be and sands that are even softer and more beautiful than the beach you guys washed up on uh the most picturesque palm trees you see people just like laying out on beach chairs or playing frisbee or um 
these you see these same like attendants in the same white uniforms bringing people towels or trays with fancy colorful drinks on them just mm. the most beautiful island paradise you could imagine <laughs> finn is covered in blood oh yeah <laughs> finn is still covered in blood i guess i'm more like red finn and yeah, as you guys oh emerge God. at the edge of this tropical paradise and stand there looking out and sort of taking in the scene, uh, and you remember what she'd said about just going to registration and paying, and you're all kind of individually coming to the realization, counting through how much gold you have, that this might pose a little bit of a problem. Uh, but you are uh, you have emerged nonetheless from the dangerous and deserted island that you washed up on into the beautiful Bluefin Tropical Resort. Would we have heard of this before? Like, would we know what island it is? I will say, you can go ahead and roll me a history check. I'm also going to do that as a sailor. Can I roll a perception check to see if they're hiring? Sure. I rolled an 18. (laughs) I rolled an 8. And an 8. Okay. Um... Malachi, you had heard of this before at some point in your past. Um, You didn't know exactly where it was. Um, So this doesn't, you you can't like, you can like point exactly to it on a map. But you know that the general area is right around where you'd thought the ship was when it wrecked. Um, Sure. And yeah, you know that this is just like a, a high class getaway for wealthy people. Right. Do I know, like, if it's, like, league-affiliated? You know that they are not intentionally affiliated with any nation, so that they, Mm -hmm. again, so they can be kind of an escape, and people can come here from wherever. Right, right. It's a purge resort. There's still laws. I I think I know this place. You know this place? (laughs) Not, I've never been here, but I think, um, I think I've heard about it before. I think some of the generals used to come here. On vacation. Ooh, Reagan makes a mental note about the word generals, but chooses not to press and it. Finn also makes a mental note and is like, oh, so he sold car insurance. <laughs> what the fuck is a car, Finn? <laughs> no one here is proficient in land vehicles. Andy, what was your perception check? Oh, wait, yes, I am. I got a 17. A 17 to see if they're hiring? Yeah. Okay, um, this is not the kind of place where there's, like, we're hiring flyers around or anything like that. Uh, if you'd like, you can ask the woman who's with you. I feel like that might be a faux pas. <laughs> right, right. Then I will say you can't really tell even with a 17 because this is not the kind of place where they have that information publicly available because there's not really okay. people who come here who are just right. casually walking around <laughs> looking for a job. Uh. Yeah, so the woman who found you guys leads you through the resort over to a building um, which has Mm -hmm. the word registration over the door. Uh, She leads you inside a little bell over the door like dingles as you walk through. um, And you see sitting behind a counter, there is a receptionist. Hold on, I just remembered I'm still wearing the hat. (laughs) You're still wearing the hat. Oh, and I am still wearing the leaf. So I kind of fit in. I kind of fit in. So sitting there behind the registration counter, uh, you see this woman who has um, dark hair pulled back in like a bun. You see she has light blue skin and these little like fins kind of at the side of her face. Yep. You recognize this as a triton, which is a race of aquatic people um, who are pretty Mm. common in these parts. Um, And she looks up at the three of you and she says... Oh, I see someone had a bit of a rough journey here. Uh, gentlemen, are you pre-registered to stay with us? I hand her the yoga flyer. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. I hold up my triangle. Right, all right. None of these things are relevant to me, necessarily. I say, right, but, um, so our ship wrecked on the way over. Your ship wrecked? Unfortunately, all our documents were lost. Hmm. But you were coming to check in here. Yeah. Really. So you're in my guest book. I hope so. Can I see the guest book to, like, read a name from it that I can say is mine? <laughs> uh-huh. um, make me a perception check as she sort of opens the guest book and starts flipping through it. Uh, it's going to be a five. Five, you can't. You look over and you see that she's got this like very cramped handwriting or maybe she's just writing in the Triton language, which you don't know. Um, so, yeah, she you you can't make out any names. Aha, I do know the Triton language. 
<laughs> so I'm um, just gonna give like a little you know a little uh little quick pump mm-hmm. and um okay oh, yeah you're still shirtless <laughs> and I'm just gonna issue like <laughs> a um very courteous and flattering greeting in Aquin, you know, something charming. Mm. Uh, she smiles. Go ahead and make me just a general charisma check. Oh, bet. Charisma gang. Oh, no, that's just a, uh, what's 13 plus 5? 18? 18. 18. She gives you a very warm smile and responds in Aquin like, Greetings. We are more than happy to get you welcomed. We would love to get you to your villa so you can clean up, relax a little bit. Uh, we just need your names so that I can make sure that all the payment is taken care of. <laughs> I kind of like smile and then just kind of freeze. Does she say that in Aquin or in Common? She says that in Aquin. Okay. I say, what did she say? How much money do I have? Um, it's however much you got from your background. Usually it's about 10 gold oh, pieces. Uh, not much. Uh, so I, I clear my throat. And I'm just like, um, my name is Finjamin Fisher. Mm. I sputter a little <laughs> bit. Finn, go ahead and give me a deception check as she's flipping through her guest book looking for something. Oh my god. 14. No, I did the math wrong. 10. Okay. That's worse. <laughs> yeah, she looks around at all of you and she goes, you know, it's fine if you... I, I, I interrupt and I say... Do you have, um, I should be under General Neiman in there? Okay. Uh, Taylor, just roll me a pure luck check. Just roll the d20 and tell me what you get. Uh, seven. Seven? Okay. Um, she looks up and she's like, oh, the name is familiar, but General Neiman doesn't have any registration in here and hasn't, uh, he hasn't had a reservation for quite some time. Uh, listen, it's fine if you're not... Uh, no. My apologies. Oh. I, I, he told me he registered me for this vacation. This this is my paid leave? Oh, well, luckily for you, we do still have some rooms open. It's just ten gold pieces a night for a room. Okay, but General Neiman told me he'd paid in advance. Well, I don't have any records of that in my books. Um, You can go ahead and make a... Pers- actually, make a deception <sighs> check, Malachi. Okay. Oh, maybe he is. Uh, not really. Twelve? <laughs> okay. She... Yeah, she's like, why don't I give General Neiman a call? Who should I say is... How? We have magical means of communication here at the Blue oh, Fin. Right. We spare no expense. It's not a <laughs> cell phone. I forgot because I don't know how to scry. Uh, which of his men should I tell him is asking? Um... <clears throat> It's Kassir. Captain Kassir. Kassir. All right. I will let him know. In the meantime, you're welcome to wait in our waiting area if you'd like. Do you have, like, a public restroom? Tell you what. If someone will just give me five gold down payment and I will just escort you to your room right now and you can get all cleaned up. Uh, sorry, sorry. Is it I'm ten sorry. gold per person so, or ten gold total? Ten gold for the room for the night. So I'm... Okay. I'm, Paying you, and I don't even know if you're going to have me stay in this reservation. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> she purses her lips and narrows her eyes a little bit, and she goes, You'll, of course, get your gold back if you end up having to leave, but also the next ship by which you can leave doesn't arrive for, like, four more days, so... Mm. All right, well, I appreciate it. Um, Sure. <laughs> that's it, she's that's like it. looking between the three of you expectantly one of us has to give her money all right i look at reagan <laughs> I, i'm like i shouldn't i shouldn't have to pay for this right um i can tell that he's kind of running out of steam on the lie or the whatever the hell is happening here <laughs> he's not a good lying boy he's not good at lying and so i um hoist back up my um you know best quick flex and i turn to her and i say an aquan in my beautiful fluent aquan i say something to the effect of um a uh, sure thing that would be lovely thank you so much for your patience understandably we're all a bit rattled and unfortunately due to the um traumatic nature of the uh shipwreck we've all lost our purses i'm sure you can understand how that's gonna happen in a uh, 
shipwreck situation, as you can see. I, I even lost my shirt, and I just kind of, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we just give her the money? And this is all in Aquin? Yeah, this is all in Aquin. So, so Malachi's just hearing... <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly what it sounds like. So, um, we might be able to rustle together, like, uh, two pieces of gold, if that's acceptable, and I, I'm real sorry about it. Yeah, y- you seem like a lovely woman, so I, I appreciate you dealing with us. Reagan, make me a persuasion check, <laughs> uh, make it with advantage. Uh, 14 plus 3 is 17. Yeah, 17. Okay, uh, she nods and her expression softens a little and she's like, well, you do seem like you've been through quite the ordeal and, you know, it is a shame about your shirt like that. <laughs> <laughs> is this in Aquan too? Yes, yes, this is in Aquan. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Tell you what, do you think it would be possible that the three of you could do me a favor? And this is, she switches back to Common. Mm-hmm. You seem like strong men, and I noticed you have some weaponry with you. I puff out my chest with a crop top on. We had a bit of a problem recently in our spa. Um, you see, we have this druid. She's very talented, experienced with, like, natural remedies and that sort of thing. But something may have gotten a little bit out of hand, and there is, you know... A giant, dangerous ooze stomping around and destroying things in the spa. Mm. And, you know, we we closed it off, told everybody we were doing some renovations. Um, But if the three of you could go in there and just take care of that problem for me, I think we'd be able to comp you a room at least until the next ship comes and you can depart. She should have led with that. I okay, elbow they... Finn in the ribs. <laughs> Are you not? So you're not going to call General Neiman? Well, if you'd like me to call General Neiman, I, I mean, mean we, if that we story can... held any water, then I'm perfectly happy to. I chuckle uh... and go, <laughs> water. <laughs> Finn, exactly. Finn perks up, water? I say, well, we'd be happy to fight your ooze, but I'm sure Mar would be happy to hear from me. So. All right, I'll put the message in for you anyway, because then if he gets back to me, you don't have to kill the ooze. We'll fight your ooze. We'll fight your ooze. You'll fight we'll my fight ooze? ooze? Excellent. Oh, I'll fight more than just your ooze. <laughs> hmm. Well, this isn't terribly urgent. If you need to uh, take a breather, clean yourselves up, that's fine. But when you're ready, just come back here and I'll have someone take you over to the spa. Mm. Do you have any sort of healing facilities for someone who had been bit by a lizard, perhaps? <laughs> well, you know, generally people here aren't being bit by lizards. Um, I say, I mutter ungrateful little so we brat don't have, under like, my breath. Dedicated, I mean, if you wanted, you could ask around or you could, I suppose, go over to our first aid station. We have, like, band-aids and ice packs. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, Thanks. I say, and I All go right. to kind of shepherd the other two away towards the public restroom before we can... So we're just going to go fight the no-face from Spirited Away is what I'm gathering? <laughs> before we can do any more damage, and I thank her profusely in Aquin. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys head out of the reception area to go clean yourselves up before preparing to fight a spa ooze, and I think that is where we will bring our first session here to a close. Oh, <laughs> I, I was gonna, I was gonna apologize to them because I'm very bad at lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you all so much for listening and for giving this podcast a shot. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, you can drop us a review on iTunes. You can also follow us on our social medias. Yeah, give us a follow on Twitter, Tumblr, or Instagram at Ship of Fools Cast, all one word. And if you liked what you heard today, be sure to tell a friend about us. Send them on over. Be our free advertising. Please. And if just following us isn't enough for you, then you can tweet about the show with hashtag ShipOfFoolsCast. And uh, thank you to Lucas Mangold for writing our theme music. You can get in touch with him at LucasCarlMusic at gmail.com, which is Carl with a K. And thank you to Jared Haberdink for writing some other music for us in that episode that you have recently listened to. (laughs) And thank you to Theo Golden for drawing our logo. Uh, And you can get in touch with him at tgoldenart, at tgoldenart on Instagram. 
And that is all for tonight. So we are going to be releasing a new episode every other week, which means that the next time you get to hear our voices is going to be on July 21st. So we will see you then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. That is indeed when we will see you. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, this fun fact, we can see you while you're listening. <laughs> yeah, we can. We <laughs> incredible technology. I'm watching you right now. <laughs> it's a really nice shirt. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Okay, guys. love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Be safe. Bye. <laughs> bye. Everyone, Avast, welcome to Ship of Wait. Fools. What? Can we, can, we, can, we get, can we get just like, can we just get like a like a couple seconds of silence before you launch in? Oh, I think that so should be so the in, in the recording. <laughs> That's gonna go on the end. Yeah, yeah. Is this veggie tales? This feels like veggie tales. <laughs> in what way? I call Larry. Okay. <laughs>